Good morning, Happy Valley, and welcome back to another edition of the PSU 365 podcast. I'm your host, Richie Schneider, and joined as always by my co-host, Dylan Calhan Crowley. Dylan, we have some big news on the recruiting trail. Penn State has landed yet another commitment, their 12th commitment in the 2025 recruiting cycle. Uh, I feel like we're almost done, number one. Um, but number two, um, Lyric Samuel, uh, wide receiver out of uh, New York, Erasmus Hall Campus School. Uh, over in Brooklyn, uh, this is uh, this seems like a pretty big get just based on uh, the fact I know him pretty well. But he, what do you think? About yeah, I mean, far? this is uh, definitely a big get, and you joke about you know Penn State being halfway done, but this is now commitment number twelve, and as we've talked about in the past, we're mm-hmm. thinking twenty three, uh, between twenty three and twenty seven commitments for Penn State in this cycle. So uh, we are legitimately about halfway done this cycle for Penn State, and. Uh, I'm sure they'll be done this class uh, for the most part by uh, the end of the summer. Uh, If not by the end of June or mid-July, this class should be predominantly done. Uh, Bud Lyric Samuel, like you said, uh, number two player out of the state of New York, five, uh, sorry, three-star prospect, 5.5 rivals rating, uh, has good size, six foot, about six foot three and a half, six foot four, uh, 180, 185 yeah. pounds, uh, depending, I guess, on the day. Uh, but good size. He has good speed, good motor. It's a, it's a high upside talent here for Penn State to land. I know some people are going to look at that three star rating, that 5.5 Rollins rating, not particularly be, you know, over the moon. Look at the offer sheet. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is, I think, a high quality prospect for Penn State to land here in the cycle. And somebody who has, like I said, quite a bit of upside for Marcus Higgins to work with. Penn State hasn't had too many big bodied wide receivers. Samuel is that for sure at six foot three, six foot four. Uh maybe not elite size, but very good size. And you combine that with speed and that could create a special combination. Uh and, and yeah, small offer sheet, but a quality one. Michigan State, Rutgers, Syracuse, West Virginia. All Power 5 programs, obviously, all quality uh, schools that have produced some wide receiver talent over the last few years Mm -hmm. uh, as well, which I think is worth noting. Uh, But, yeah, this was one that, you know, Penn State's been recruiting Sandler for quite a a while, offered offered him last spring, I believe. He's been to campus, uh, I would, Mm -hmm. it looks like seven times about, uh, including this past January. Uh, So this was always one that, you know, if he was a take, it felt like Penn State was going to be the place for him. And uh, clearly he was a take for the Ninja Lions. And uh, they added another, you know, high upside wide receiver, high upside player, I should say, on that offensive side of the ball to their recruiting class. Uh, not, fits in well, I think, with what they're going for in this class, which uh, seems to be not a headlining class, but more so of a complementary class. Mm-hmm. Because I, I think a lot of people would agree with me in terms of that 2026 recruiting cycle really being the, you know, big one for Penn big State, uh, concern, especially the in-state town. If Penn State landed uh, mm-hmm. most of that in-state town in the 2026 class alone, it's probably going to be a top 15 class. Uh, so I think this class is very yeah. much going to be that complementary class for Penn State, much like last year. Which is not, the, which I don't think is a bad thing necessarily. I'm just not going to have that star power, and I think that's what the class says so far. But a lot of these guys they are taking do have quite a bit of upside, and that includes Samuel. Well, he'll fit in very well with a Beckham Kritza, a Keandre Barker, a, a Tyke Hayes, as well. Yeah, this one shouldn't really come as too much of a surprise for the sole fact that, um, speaking of Beckham Kritza, he told us back on one of his junior day visits that he was recruiting Samuel pretty hard along yeah. with two other receivers. So um, here's one of them. So it's a good old little check mark in his recruiting hat, I guess. But uh, yeah, Samuel's, Samuel's really good, man. He's a uh, kid I've been following for quite some time. I've gotten to see him. You yeah. saw that block right there. That was, that was pretty impressive. Um, he's a good blocker. He's got good size. Obviously, he has to pack on the pounds because he's he's pretty skinny for yeah. six foot four. He's listed one eighty five. I'm going to say he's a little less than that, but um, you could say that for just about any uh, right. high school prospect that they right. need to pack on some pounds and, and muscle. So, but they, he plays yeah. in a run heavy offense, and he's got six hundred, almost seven hundred yards and eleven touchdowns this year. So, yeah, and people may not be you know loving the numbers that he posted, but like you said, run heavy offense, and there's also an offense this year that replaced from their 
2022 season, their starting running back, their starting quarterback, and their entire offensive line. I mean, it was it was, it was very mm-hmm. much a different offense this past season for Rasmus Hall than it was uh, in 2022, and that that plays into these things as well. I wouldn't be too worried about the numbers on Penn State fan. I think you watch the tape, you see what he brings from a size a perspective, from an athleticism perspective, and there's a lot to like about him. And I and I think that's why Penn State feels very much comfortable at taking him at this point in the cycle. I mean, that's a great catch right there. Um, great hands. Great hands, yeah. Like Good it. ball skills. And uh, he's definitely one of those guys who's the best athlete on the field at any time he takes the field. But uh, th- that's not necessarily a bad thing, obviously, either. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, I really like this pickup for Penn State overall. And, you know, you can't teach size. You can't teach speed. Penn State obviously has been crude in speed for a long time. But uh, size-wise now, if you look at Penn State's 2024 recruit class, out of their 12 commitments, uh, mm-hmm. Eight of them, according to rivals, are uh, six foot three or above, uh, and now that's obviously multiple positions. But you can't teach size and you can't teach yeah. speed. And Penn State's definitely, uh, you know, stacking up uh, both, uh, stacking up prospects both on s- size and speed right now, which is uh, always going to be a benefit yeah. at the next level. Uh, just looking back at it a little bit too, um, they've produced so much talent out of Erasmus yeah. Hall over the years. So he's he's going to honestly come in pretty ready. Um, they've had a four star linebacker who a couple years ago was a Penn State uh, target in Moses Walker. Um, they've produced several Ohio State guys, Texas A and M. They sent guys to Michigan. Um, Christian Isian is a DB who's now in a seventh round pick who was all rookie team this year. Uh, in, a, in the NFL with the Tampa Bay Bucks, um, he does remind me a lot of a former Rasmus Hall guy in Sean Ryan, but I think he's a little faster and yep. more physical. Um, Sean Ryan, you might remember, was a Temple guy, transferred to Rutgers for his final season, and actually he's in the league too with uh, the Baltimore Ravens. But he's tall, he's lengthy, he, he's not afraid to block, he has good skill, get good ball skills, and he's pretty elusive and has solid speed. And he's listed as a four point five six and. I believe that was tested at the most recent uh, USA, uh, not not USA Army All American, whatever the hell they call it, yeah. the National Combine Camp thing. It's not Army All American; it's like just All American, I think. But um, on top of this, and I think I said this a couple years. Oh, I shouldn't say a couple years ago. A year ago, mm-hmm. when they got Josiah Brown, Josiah Brown's very well yeah. connected throughout New York. The year before, they got AJ Locke, who was a PWO type coach situation. Um, who is very well connected throughout New York. They're all friends with each other. All these guys are very close. And uh, you saw the other day, he posted a picture. He ran into my boy, Josiah Brown, at a a Penn State visit. So I think this is a a super underrated get for Marquise Higgins. I think people are still going to criticize his recruiting a little bit, and that's rightfully so. I think that's fair. But I think this is a very, very good get. And I think this is a kid... I'd be almost shocked if he's not a four star. Yeah, I definitely think he has that four star uh, upside. I mean, six foot three, uh, six foot four, uh, 185 pounds, mm-hmm. and four, five, six speed. I mean, that's that's a really good combination. And I think he's unfortunately being probably held back just by the level of competition he faces. Um, but I, I think, yeah, I think it's a really high upside. Uh, pick up for Penn State and I'm sure we'll see him at one of the prospect camps in the summer uh, for Penn State uh, here uh, in June, upcoming June, uh, maybe late July. uh, And uh, we'll we'll get to see him against some better competition there, I think for sure. And I'll be interested to see how he performs there. Yeah. Yeah. Very excited. Uh, He was also just in Vegas. Yeah, for the uh, NFL. uh, Some type of high school football combine. There's a, there's a lot of different things going yeah. on now with yeah. NFL and high school players. It's uh, mm-hmm. really interesting. But, um, yeah. yep. Uh, what was I going to add on Samuel? Uh, of course, I can't. I will say he didn't have the, he doesn't have the offer right. list, I guess. But there's still a lot of schools that were very, very close to offering and just kind of wanted to see him again this spring. Like, I know Duke was in play. Um, who else? Virginia Tech, Coastal, mm-hmm. Pitt. Uh someone else there's someone else i completely forgot but there's a lot of schools that were very close to offering um but honestly a lot of schools see these kids now and once they see six power five offers or most of these g5s are like right shot. see ya so they don't even bother anymore. right absolutely yeah I, I i wouldn't be too worried about the stats and i wouldn't be too worried about the uh rankings right now it, we're, we're all also just so early in the cycle uh still that there's gonna be what three, four more updates, maybe five before 
uh, the 2025 cycle is uh, put to bed. So uh, plenty of time for him to move up the rankings. And um, Penn State is almost better than any other program when it comes to identifying kids early. So I I wouldn't be shocked if this is another Mm -hmm. case of that. Yeah, I said it in our last pod, but he uh, he's just such an intriguing kid. I got to see him this summer, actually, at a 7-on-7 seven seven camp, and I, I know the program pretty well to the point where I was like, damn, what, what's what's good with this one? Like, why, why, is, he, why is he just, uh, he's like walking up and down the field whenever he doesn't get the ball, and he goes, hold on, come over here. Tell him that. And I'm like, fuck, now I got to tell the kid, like, dude, hey, pick it the fuck up. He goes, no, tell him truthfully. I was like, all right. Man, you just look like you're lazy. You look like you don't want to be here. Shit, you not. He goes, all right, watch. And I shit you not, the next two possessions, he gets the game-winning touchdown, and then he wins the game, the championship with the championship-winning touchdown. I'm like, oh, shit. All right, well, probably should have been doing that the whole time. I'm just saying. I don't mean to say I know what I'm doing or I got that little coach speak in me, but I I, I know for how to sure. coach. For sure. Uh, that was a good story. Uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I really have not too much to add left on Samuel. Um, you know, I think uh, – we said just last time we recorded. Uh, I know we didn't get to do a Michael uh, Troutman podcast, but uh, when uh, I guess it was Deshaun Burnett who last committed before that, we said we wouldn't be shocked if Penn State picked mm-hmm. up another commitment before uh, the end of February and ended up being two so far. Uh, and again, uh, I think yeah. Penn State's going to keep on rolling. We'll probably see a little bit of a uh, little bit of a a slowdown, slow down. sometime. <laughs> Maybe March, but then you know you got the spring game in mm-hmm. uh, April. Visits can start back up in April, and then uh, will yeah. we'll be an official visit season, and that is going to be a rapid fire of commitments. I'm sure. Um, uh, I would be shocked yeah. if Penn State's probably close to about 15 when it comes to official visit season. And then you, you know, it'll be very easy for them to pick up another uh, seven to ten commitments during that time span too. Jeez. Uh, let me ask you this. Any name specifically for – actually, two-parter. Any name specifically you're looking for for the next commit? And will the next commit be a 2026 kid? Am I crazy I think it's think possible, uh, but I also would think if it's a 2026 kid, we're probably talking around the spring game. Uh, so I'm not sure they go another two months without a commitment out of a 2025 kid. Uh Though, if I'm looking at 2025 prospects, um, obviously, Matt Zoller has to be at the top of that list just because he now, – now he's talked yeah. about wanting to uh, visit <clears throat> schools again. And I, I know I said April, but I think visits can start up next month, I believe, so, uh, for spring mm-hmm. practices. Yeah, they, they so, go right back. Uh, yeah. He's set to take a bunch of visits during the spring. Uh, I still think that's Georgia and Penn State at the top, but Missouri, I think, is definitely a school to watch there as a dark horse per se. Uh, so Zoller's is obviously somebody that is worth keeping an eye on. Uh, his recruitment is going to be coming to mm-hmm. an end here in the next uh, two months, I would uh, have to guess, based off what he's been saying uh, and just uh, guessing based off his timeline. Uh, Mm-hmm. I'll get the wrong gear. Um, yeah. Give me one second. Uh, running back, they're obviously good on. They're they're talking, still talking to a few kids, but can still add. Uh, Andrew Olish, the tight end out of Southern Lehigh, another one that maybe does Penn State push to get a commitment from uh, with his recruitment starting to pick up. Uh, keep momentum on your mm-hmm. side, prevent him from, you know, maybe again to some of these other schools, but, uh, you know, uh, I don't think Penn State won't force him into a decision, obviously, but maybe one that you turn up the heat on per se. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, Michael Carroll. Michael a Carroll bit, maybe. would be one though. I would probably guess he waits to, uh, take his official visits. Uh, I would expect Penn State to receive mm-hmm. one, Michigan to receive one, South yeah. Carolina will definitely receive one too. And then, uh, I mean, they have unlimited yeah. official visits now, so it's not a guessing game anymore of who the final yeah. two will be. Beyond that, really don't have any, you know, strong feelings about who could be next per se right now, just uh, in a little mm-hmm. bit of a weird spot in the cycle uh, in terms of that. 
Yeah, I mean, it is a dead period after all. Um, so I, I don't think we expected this, but here we are with uh, several commitments during the dead period. So uh, anything else really before we uh, sign off here? No, I don't think uh, anything really else. Uh, nothing worth off the uh, top of my head. No. All right, cool. So uh, for me and Dylan, that's another episode of the PSU 365 podcast signing off.